In its brief time as a mid to late 2000s cultural icon, the Boondocks amassed a cult following. A strong audience, sustained cultural relevance, a mediocre social media campaign, and in doing so it created a reputation for itself, one of being unfiltered truth. And while in part that has to do with a strong PR campaign to push Aaron, and by extension the Boondocks, as some underground truth, it also has to do with the replications of reality we see within the show. It goes without saying that these elements aren't actually predictions, but instead recreations of small scale existing things that just, just happen to repeat themselves. The Boondocks isn't predicting anything, but that's not exactly why I'm making this video. This projection of day to day realities, while praised in hindsight, creates an interesting conversation now and pertains to how this image has reconstructed the perception of the show's material. Let's talk about it. The Boondocks as a series is fascinating because of how closely it ties with Aaron's experiences and the way he views the world. Huey procrastinates mowing the lawn, Aaron procrastinates doing the strip. Huey ponders whether the Free Huey World Report is having the impact he really wants. Aaron pondered whether the comic strip was having the intended impact he wanted. The Boondocks is about black kids moving into a mostly white suburb, you, you know, you get the point. Like for instance, the garden party was actually based on the lack of attention the comic strip was getting. It was effectively Huey yelling at the audience for not caring about what he has to say because he's cute. You could even argue once this conception feeds into that. Once a la bank, once the enterprises, once a security. Except without all the house robbery stuff, I don't, I don't think Aaron was robbed. And I imagine it'd be really easy for him not to with this video sponsor, Atlas VPN. Ah, it's here. Atlas VPN is a tool that encrypts your data and hides your virtual location. When you connect to a VPN server, your device is given a new IP and DNS address. All the traffic is encrypted and routed towards the VPN server. When the traffic arrives at the server, the VPN server decrypts the information and allows the traffic to access the desired destination. They actually have a discount deal going on right now. It's a free year deal for $1.39 a month. And the deal doesn't last that long, so click the link in the description if you want to get it. It's supported, and it's supported on any device. That same phone that you're going to be using to play the Boondocks game, you could be using Atlas VPN on. <laughs> I remember once Aaron was at a conference with hackers, and it sounded like he didn't know what to say to them. If he had Atlas VPN, maybe he'd know what to say. Maybe, maybe he won't be running from all this reboot tour. He'd be hiding. He'd be hiding for four years. By inserting your email address, the tool scans the internet to see if your password ended up in any recorded breach data, or any of the dumps including emails, names, passwords, sensitive information. Enabling notifications ensures you're aware of such incidents and gives you a heads up, to, you know, to change your passwords before anyone has a chance to steal your accounts. Fun fact, because I'm from the UK, when I'm researching these videos, sometimes interviews are, they're region locked. I, I just can't see them. But you know, with Atlas VPN, that isn't an issue anymore. Like, that's a real thing. That's not even, that's not even paid. Link in the description, Atlas VPN is only $1.39 a month. Do your thing. The Boonox is just as much fictional as it is autobiographical. While he certainly wouldn't admit to it nowadays, Huey is effectively Aaron's alter ego. The cartoonist says that Huey is probably a lot more like him when he was attending the University of Maryland at College Park. Huey, he says, is who he would have been at the age of eight had he known all the things he knows now about civil rights history, militant philosophies and racial stereotyping. This isn't even particularly problematic. A lot of stories involve projection. One person's art is effectively a look into the fantasies of their mind. To not expect a level of projection would be ridiculous, and to some capacity, I think, I think that's part of the appeal. You know, what I wanted to do was uh, have a, a vehicle to do some satire that, that was centered around black politics and, 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 a, and a sort of, uh, obviously it's, it's very leftist, but it's, I think it's, you know, far, far left. Uh, be selfish, be self-indulgent, and that's kind, of, that's kind of what makes your art unique, it's you. The problem with this is that the Boondocks is very overtly political. Especially the comic strip, it's very blunt and in your face. And granted, that was Aaron's intention, but there's a difference between Lisa Simpson talking about global warming and Huey pondering whether black radicals in the mainstream media are spied on by government agents. Th th those are two different things. And when you have Aaron in the media speaking about Bush and, you know, 9-11 and what have you, it's the line that's drawn between Huey and Aaron becomes a lot more nebulous and grey and murky, to be blunt. And this is what the Boondocks really struggled with. It was projecting Aaron's reality, but through the lens of Huey. I got a comment recently saying that part of the reason the Boondocks is so successful is because it depicts these varying political perspectives and they all clash. But uh, eh. while, while that's true to an extent, I don't necessarily believe that just because it does depict these varying perspectives, that all these perspectives are designed to be sympathized with. We like to make the joke that oh, some people are really like Uncle Ruckus, but it's very clear in the show that you're not supposed to think Ruckus is right. 
Like that's that's never like a thing in the show, right? Similarly, um, while there are some issues with how they depict Tom and some Hosefi stuff, to be blunt, ultimately there's not a point in the show where you're like, yeah, Tom, he's he he's right. Huey don't know what he's talking about, right? The perspective that you're mainly designed to sympathize with through the lens of the Boondocks is Huey's. And occasionally grander, but mainly Huey. And because of this, the Boonox is very self-indulgent and it is very narcissistic. But these aren't, again, inherent flaws. Aaron has spoken about this. Just throwing out my opinions in a very sort of selfish and self-absorbed manner because I can. And I can talk about who I want to talk about and I get the last word seven days a week. And, you know, people can try to talk back, but it never really works out for them. That's the great thing about satire uh you know as gary trudeau once said it's it's selfish and it's unfair and that's what makes it great it doesn't play by any rules you know i'm a professional smart ass aaron was only projecting his reality not predicting the future but what's interesting about this perspective is once again the boonot was chastised for this early in its conception there are several interviews, and you're gonna, I'm going to be showing a bunch of them up on, on screen right now. There are several interviews as if people going, this is too political. I don't like, it's too angry. We don't like it. Too black, too racial, too this, too that. This is a very big thing. I'm going to give, I'm going to give a shout out to the, to the, to the, uh, too sensitive cats. <laughs> them now, the too sensitive heads. Give, give a shout out to them. Ultimately, there genuinely were people that are like, yeah, no, we don't want to see this. Very similar to some of the conversation we've seen nowadays, interestingly enough. Again, projecting reality. But, you know, there were a significant number of people that looked at the Boondocks and said, I don't want this. This isn't what I want black people to be doing. I want us to be happy. And this strip, this show, isn't very happy. Thank you very much for your call. Let's go to Trenton, New Jersey. Trenton, you're next this morning. Hi. I have a comment about the uh, cartoonist that was on previously. Which one? Uh, Mr. Magruder or Mr. Garner? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Magruder. Yes. Uh, I, I feel sorry for him because I really think that his strip was picked up based only on the fact that his strip was black and contained black characters. And that's sad. I think the comic pages should be lighthearted and funny and keep people upbeat, not bring them down, not tell them how they should think. He was telling people how they should think of Jar Jar in his comic strip. I don't believe the strips are for that. Do you think I feel sad for him. He's very arrogant and he doesn't know that the syndicate only picked his strip to market to black people. Do, do you think then, I guess, there, that uh, if there should or should not be editorial uh, comments in the comic strips? Uh, editorial comic strips are on the editorial page, not lumped in with, you know, Peanuts and Dilbert and all that. That's what people want to see when they flip to the editorial page. There's lots of them and they're great and there's room for it. I think his strip was saying that we need to target a black market and this guy is black and he's got a, a very black strip. Okay. There's another black strip about a nurse and a policeman and they're doing quite well. It's upbeat. They don't cram their black down your throat. Okay, thank you very much. Washington, D.C. When you compare those elements to the way the Boondocks is currently received by the general public, it creates this weird dissonance. The Boondocks is this great show that told us the truth, but when it was first coming out, there was such a strong backlash against it projecting any semblance of reality. The Boondocks' existence is such a fascinating anomaly to me because of this. I say this not as a form of regression, but maybe, maybe the Boondocks wouldn't be as well received as it was if it came out today. And this isn't to give stock to those who argue that this generation is, is far too sensitive to handle it. No, it has nothing to do with that. But the current discourse, I don't think would lead to the show being as well received as it currently is. So why do I think the Boondocks is actually successful, you know, despite this? Because I don't think it's just the absurdity of its animation, but perhaps it is a small factor. This might sound surreal, but there's a difference between a reality show and animation. Most black shows are grounded in the world we live in. That means all the politics that founded the world are present. The reality of being black in the world we live in isn't apolitical. Therefore, you could argue it'd be disingenuous to treat it as such. This doesn't mean anyone is saying there isn't more to being a black person than the politics surrounding your identity, but instead just to make a point about why there's that difficulty in the first place. When you're doing a show grounded in reality, depicting black people is difficult in this sense. 
If you ground your show within realism, you're forced to either confront or ignore the realities black people face. And regardless of what you do, someone's gonna be mad. Our identities are political, that is why there's discourse. Animation doesn't feel as overtly gruesome nor as personally linked. Ruckus was shot 142 times in one of these episodes. Shabazz was a wrongly accused political prisoner. Once though, it's effectively Aaron's critique of capitalism. But these ideas aren't explicitly happy or joyous, so once again, I ask, why does the boondock get away with it? Leave a comment, I'm genuinely curious, because I got my answer. I don't think it did. All these critiques I've been showing throughout this video, that they came out live in the moment. And I don't mean these half-baked, half-hearted, the boondocks nearly got cancelled headlines, but serve nothing but feeding a narrative. I mean its inherent premise, the characterization, and means to which it made its points. It's fascinating. I want to talk a little bit about how art paves the way for others. People like Richard Pryor and Chris Rock really helped normalise this idea of social issues and race being talked about within comedy. The boondocks no doubt would have existed in 2005, regardless of the context. Aaron had that TV deal and he'd been trying to sort it out for years. But the form it took wouldn't have been what it was. Those 9-11 comic strips that put the Boondocks on the map, and, well, off of it, they're based on some jokes and the discussion between Aaron and Chris Rock. I'm not saying that Aaron wouldn't have spoken about 9-11's coerced patriotism at some point, or e even immediately, he probably would have. But the nature in which he spoke on it, the normalised Ronald Reagan jokes that became a staple, that opening speech, the post 9 11 undertones throughout the entire show, it probably wouldn't exist. No return of the king, no it's going down, no a date with the health inspector. And while we're talking about the influence Chris Rock had on Aaron, we can see this no greater than the very existence of Colonel H. Stinkmina. I have never made a video on this guy. Some day I might, but I mean, assuming I don't, here's some of my abridged thoughts on him. I think he consolidates and defines the influence the Boondocks took from that 2000s era. He's, he personifies an era of black comedy. Whether that's a good or bad thing, huh. The whole black people versus niggas bit, that was a Chris Rock bit. The gratuitous use of the n-word and the logic behind it, it takes influence from Richard Pryor. And as many critics and fans at the time were quick to point out, the Boondocks was seen as almost this pseudo-spiritual successor to The Chappelle Show after everything that happened with Dave Chappelle. And the Boondocks embraced it. The Boonox isn't an imitation of what came before it, and a lot of the dialogue and conversations surrounding the show were critiques of it, both it and its predecessors. However, the state it currently exists in wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the black show prior paving the way for it. Like, I believe Ruckus would have been made, he was actually just in the original pilot. But Stingmina is a bit different. Stingmina is arguably the Boonox's most popular character of the day, and it's a glorified summation of the comedic sensibilities of the time period. The existence of each show allowed the next one to thrive. So what comes after the boondocks? Well, I'll dedicate a video to that, but what I do want to talk about is the glorification of the boondocks as a whole. Yeah, that's the more bullshit. Damn. You know, Riley, the moon steals its shine from the sun, and no one ever gets the two confused. Take it as a compliment. Why can't niggas do them? Huh? The boondocks, as I mentioned prior, is a cultural icon of the series. But in having that reputation, it inherently distances itself from any meaningful critique. Ones that could not only help alleviate some of the more questionable PR moves, but in terms of pushing forward black entertainment. You know, to some capacity anyway, I don't, I don't go say I'm the guy. I don't need to prefix that I like the boondocks. Operation Black Steel, Free Huey, The Story Times. It doesn't need staying every time I want to express criticism towards the show, but alas, right, I gotta, I gotta cover my track. Drowned in the discourse surrounding how perfect the boondocks is, there's some big criticisms I have towards the show that rarely get addressed because because of this conversation. This has relevancy to what I'm talking about, so don't worry, I'll, I'll simplify it to three things. One, the black people versus niggas narrative was really reductive. For the record, I think Stick Mina is funny, but the Boonocks fed into and perpetuated a lot of ideas surrounding black otherism. It's this idea that niggas is, they're just a, they're a subsection of ignorant black people, and we're the good ones just trying to manage with them. Stick Mina is effectively a caricature of this concept, but there's this air throughout the entire show of this, and I don't, I don't think it's particularly progressive or helpful. My issue isn't the use of the n-word, but much more how often it's used as a vehicle to distance black people from ignorant black people. It's not constructive. Two, the depiction of women in the boondocks is, uh, it, it's pretty bad. I've alluded to this sentiment in the past, but I'll double down here. There's been a number of times where I've shown the boondocks to black women, and the response a good 60% of the time is, why are the women in this show like this? There were a lot of times where I just shrug and go on with my life, but I really began to think about it. Women are only on this show to facilitate something the showrunners really want to say about black men. Sarah, Ebony, Crystal, 
like the champagne. Every time a black woman shows up in the show, the men huddle up in a room upstairs and wonder what they're gonna do about her. The Crystal episode is really horophobic, and it isn't treated with nearly as much nuance and care as when Aaron tackled homophobia. Huey is aggressively hoteppy in this episode, and he's validated in an attempt to sympathise with Grandad. The absence, or at least lack of voice that black women have on this show is abundantly clear, and I think it results in a show that unintentionally has such a skewed black male lens on issues. In fact, this third one is just a consolidation of those earlier points, but I think the Boonots had real issues with its framing. Like the S word is an episode about the N word, but instead of making it clear how we felt to the uses of the word, it's bogged down by talk of censorship and free speech. This, this isn't a newspaper, it's stupid white people. And I don't think any sane person thinks that black people are being disingenuous crybabies if they care about the usage of the word. I've encountered so many people that effectively parrot the words of this teacher, and I think it speaks volumes to how poorly some of these episodes frame their points. That's enough for now. I just went through some of that to communicate that this show, for all the progressive and interesting things it did, it wasn't perfect. It has flaws. I spoke quite a bit on progression earlier. The question I find myself asking is, what comes after the boondocks? We're in this weird era of reboots and revivals and returns, and I don't think the existence of this is inherently problematic, but it bleeds into this issue. You can't move beyond the boondocks if all we want to do is imitate it, either through it reinventing itself or trying to replicate its appeal. Do you think there'll be a rise in black cartoonists? There absolutely will be. As a matter of fact, there already has been. The question is, are they going to be any good or are they going to be knockoffs of me? I personally don't want to see any knockoffs of me. People have to be original. What I'm seeing so far are knockoffs of me. And that's not cool. Personally, I don't want to see a bunch of black cartoonists if they're not good. It doesn't make me feel good that I opened the door for a bunch of untalented people who just got on because other syndicates are trying to catch on to what Universal Press did. That said, I know some very talented black cartoonists and I'm hoping they do get a shot. I try to help where I can, but I have no interest in seeing a bunch of bad boondocks knockoffs turning up in the newspaper. Despite being more critical of this series as I get older, there's a quality to it that I really do appreciate. It's that it's transparently the way Aaron sees the world. Like, I don't always agree. And I know that I just criticise this limited framework the boondocks functions in. But I think above all else, it communicates a black perspective. There's no homogenous, concrete, correct way for black people to be represented. Because you can't speak for every black person's reality. We can be cognizant and critical of the way the media generally depicts us, but the expectation for our media to be this overt form of escapism, or power fantasy, or political commentary is setting, us, is setting ourselves up for disappointment. Black eyes can really struggle with this. Depicting black people, it can be really difficult. If you choose to accurately reflect those realities, you're not allowing black people the ability to escape those hardships. For if you distance yourself from those realities, you're not accurately portraying what it means to be black in the world we currently live in. However, with time, we grew to appreciate that element of it. When you ask Aaron why the Boonos was successful and it was actually allowed to air, he says it's just because it looks cute. He comments this even in the DVD commentaries, but if the show was essentially a direct translation of the comic strip's sensibilities, people would hate it. I sell angry black politics to 20 million white people a day. How do I do it? Because they're cute. That's it. It's not even that the Boonock strays away from political or racial discourse, and much more that the show was able to mask it ridiculously well with window dressing. Hey guys. But there are people who are really, really angry and they, they want it to be more like the strip. Why can't it be more like the strip? <sighs> yeah, I, uh, yeah, I know. I know people want that. I, I don't want that. <laughs> I just don't, I don't want the strip on TV. Yeah, they say they want it, but if they, they wouldn't like it, if they, saw it, they, they would wouldn't like it. it. They wouldn't like it. it they wouldn't, wouldn't like it. We wouldn't have made it to season two. No. We wouldn't have come close. If it was all talking about how bad Republicans Hugh, yeah, are. Yeah, right. Here we on the hill <laughs> talking about Bush. Yes, all the all time. Why can't we get out of Iraq? <laughs> <laughs> it's small <laughs> bites. That stuff Every works week. well. But yes. For a half hour. Iraq. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it NAFTA. Work at all. There's that NAFTA episode. <laughs> <laughs> you it. Aaron was very adamant on the idea that he wanted the Boonocks to be a direct racial and political commentary, despite being a form of escapism in how it interprets these ideas and the bizarre nature of it. For the sake of interest, I ask, to what extent are black shows and media allowed to reflect the struggles and realities of black people? It varies from person to person. We have to allow an artist to be an artist if we ever hope to create anything worth consuming. Art is a reflection of the fantasies in your mind, a fantasy that is inherently political, yet we all still escape to. Our perception is a distorted, politicized reality. 
but I still think that's worth consuming.